Hey everybody, I'm Daniel from Space Dock. Some of you may have heard of me. If not, you can find a link in the description below to my channel where I analyze spacecraft from various works of science fiction on a weekly basis. Today I'm covering for Eckhart's Ladder, who was kind enough to cover for us a while back, and I'll be talking about the five deadliest Star Trek starships from the United Federation of Planets. So let's get right into it. In fifth place, the iconic Galaxy Class. Now I should clarify that I am measuring the five deadliest ships as of the latest point in the Star Trek timeline around Star Trek Nemesis, which I think places this around fifth, but I should clarify that when this ship was in its element, it was probably the most powerful ship the Federation had. It's the only ship on this list that is not technically a warship, because it predates the time at which the Federation started to adopt warships in response to the Borg Collective. Rather, it's an exploration cruiser that has quite a lot of weapons, and later got even more when it was fitted for use in the Dominion War. The ship has 42 decks and a crew complement of a thousand. It can travel at warp 9.8, though more often cruises around warp 6, and it's armed with up to 14 phaser arrays and two torpedo launchers, which can be used both to fire photon torpedoes and to deploy antimatter mines. The ship is fairly well shielded, especially after its refit, but carries very little in the way of hull armor. Regardless, the ship was often able to hold its own even against Dideridex class warbirds and various large Klingon vessels, only really struggling when getting into the later years of its career, or when faced with overwhelming numbers. The ship also has a saucer separation system that allows the crew to be evacuated into the saucer section and left in a location of safety, while the star drive section turns around to engage or delay the enemy, as the civilian passengers and non-essential crew escape the area alive. In fourth place, the Akira class, as introduced in Star Trek First Contact. This is a fan favorite design, really cool looking ship. The ship is of a moderate size, fills a kind of heavy escort role, is one of the earliest dedicated warships designed to fight the Borg. Most of the deadliness of this particular ship comes from the large overslung torpedo pod on the pylon in the center there. This pod features both forward and aft launchers and carries dozens of torpedoes that can make short work of most smaller vessels, especially if their shields have already been defeated. The Akira has numerous phaser strips across the saucer section and is portrayed as being very maneuverable with its sleek and narrow frame providing a more difficult target for hostile weapons. The ship even has its deflector dish impressed into the hull so as to protect it from fire from almost any angle. And the overall space frame, at least from an in-universe standpoint, takes lots of inspiration from the older Walker class and the even older NX class. One of the coolest looking ships designed for the Federation in Star Trek, I think, and certainly one of the deadliest that we've seen on screen. In third place, the Defiant class, the Federation's first fully admitted warship. Designed following first contact with the Borg Collective in the Beta Quadrant, the ship was intended to be a purpose-built attack craft, and is drastically different in almost every design sense from the Federation standard. The ship's base frame is a single solid piece, with its nacelles built into the hull for extra protection, and a very narrow, flat silhouette that helps with evading fire in close quarters combat. The ship is extremely maneuverable, more so than almost any other Federation vessel, and is equipped with four powerful forward-mounted pulsed phase cannons, which fire individual energy projectiles rather than uninterrupted beams, as is the Federation standard. The Defiant does also carry three conventional phaser emitters and four forward torpedo tubes compatible with the then-new quantum torpedo warheads that inflict far more damage than conventional photon torpedoes. The ship also has two aft launchers for mines and standard photon torpedoes, and carries a crew complement of around 50 across four decks. The original prototype of the class, the USS Defiant, is one of the most famous ships in 24th century Federation history, playing a crucially important role in the Dominion War, and rather uniquely being equipped with a Romulan cloaking device that was lent to the Federation in a temporary exception from the Treaty of Algeron. This ship is fast, lethal, tough as nails, and was the first instance in a line of purpose-built defensive escort craft for the Federation Starfleet. In second place, the Awesome Sovereign class. This is the class of the Federation flagship, the Enterprise E. It's my favorite of all the Enterprise classes that we see across the course of Star Trek, and it has one of the 
slickest and most sophisticated looking designs I think we've ever seen in the Star Trek franchise. It's very flat and long, with a seamless transition between its secondary hull and its saucer section, and long swept pylons connecting to the nacelles. Of all the ships to be called Enterprise, this is the first one to be a warship, carrying 12 phaser arrays, 3 forward torpedo launchers, one of which carries quantum torpedoes, 3 rapid reloading aft torpedo launchers, and powerful deflector shields. Again, like the Defiant and the Akira, this ship has a very narrow forward and aft profile, making it very difficult to target when it's coming straight at you, and is also unusually maneuverable for a ship of its size. This is an impressive and imposing command ship, carrying lots of advanced sensors and communication systems, stellar cartography suites, and various other systems that allow it to coordinate a larger group of vessels over almost any range. We've seen this ship engaged in battle with Borg cubes, with Scimitar-class Riemann warbirds, and various other incredibly powerful vessels, and it's always managed to put up an impressive fight, even without assistance. This ship has definitely achieved some of the most impressive ship-to-ship victories that we've ever seen a single Federation ship pull off in the series. Simply the fact that it was involved with the successful destruction of a Borg cube marks this vessel as very impressive indeed by the standards of Federation starships. Now here we are in first place and I'm forced to give this to a ship that I admit is technically the most deadly ship the Federation have ever used in Star Trek, but more's the pity because I hate this ship. This is the Prometheus class and it's just the dumbest thing that's ever come out of Star Trek and I'm going to hijack this top five list to rant about it. This is the ship that is your favourite when you're 15 years old and you watch Star Trek Voyager because it's got a big pointy arrowhead saucer section and it's got four nacelles. It's covered in weapons and it's got regenerative shielding and ablative hull armour, but most Most of all, it has something called multi-vector assault mode, where it splits into three ships, much like a G.I. Joe toy or something. Each one of these three components obviously looks terrible because it's just a third of another ship, so they all have, like, flat tops and and covered in docking clamps and look ridiculous. The ship overall is covered in loads of tiny warp nacelles, so that each individual bit still technically works after it splits apart. This is the most deviant art self-insert fanfiction spaceship ever designed. Nothing has ever tried harder to look cool than this thing. And it's, I guess, worked to a certain extent because loads of Star Trek fans love this ship, and it is almost certainly the deadliest warship the Federation have ever used, but only by virtue of the writers wanting to make this thing as painfully badass as humanly possible. We see a separated Prometheus class swarm and destroy a large Romulan warbird in about five seconds in the Voyager episode Message in a Bottle, and that's while it was being operated by one confused medical hologram with no crew, so it's clearly pretty handy. It can also travel at warp 9 Point nine, which is the fastest you can go in Star Trek before you're in all spaces and all times simultaneously and turn into a salamander. And according to some CGI reuse that we see in an episode of Star Trek Enterprise, this ship is still in service well into the 26th century, meaning it lasted like 250 years in its career. Personally, I prefer a ship with a bit more nuance, a bit more charm, like my beloved Jaeger class. But if you're looking for the ultimate in high-tech, fastest, strongest, best, my spaceship's better than your spaceship, one-upmanship, then this is the vessel for you. With real multi-vector action, electronic lights and sounds, and authentic battle damage, it's the Prometheus class. Also, it's named after a Greek tragedy. I mean, I mean, how many Icaruses and Prometheuses need to blow up before we clock on to the fact that this is a bad idea? Well, that was the top five deadliest Federation starships from Star Trek. I've been Daniel from Space Dock. Big thanks to Eckhart's Ladder for having me on. And if you're looking for more spaceships and more inane ranting, please do follow the link in the description and subscribe to our channel. This is Daniel from Space Dock, signing off. Thank you for watching Space Dock. If you're interested in supporting the channel, please do check out the links on the screen right now or in the description below for our Patreon and channel membership services. Anything you can pledge goes towards improving our team and our equipment and allowing us to put together bigger and more exciting video projects for you guys on the channel. 